the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus went down with his apostles and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by unclean spirits were cured and the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and looking around at his disciples, he began to teach them saying, get up, go ahead, do something, move. You who are poor in spirit, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. You are blessed. Get up, go ahead, do something, move. You who mourn, for you will be comforted. You are blessed. Get up, go ahead, do something, move. You who are moderate, for you will inherit the earth. You are blessed. Get up, go ahead, do something, move. You who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for you will be filled. You are blessed. Get up. Go ahead, do something, move. You who are the merciful, for you will be shown mercy. You are blessed. Get up, go ahead, do something and move. You who are pure in heart, for you will see God. You are blessed. Get up, go ahead, do something, move. You who are persecuted because of righteousness, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. You are blessed. Get up, go ahead, do something, move. When people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man, you are blessed. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their fathers persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by people. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and hide it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before people that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfil them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter not the least stroke of the pen, neither jot nor tittle, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, all of the religious hypocrites, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Now you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not murder and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother or sister without cause will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother or sister, stupid, is answerable to the religious authorities. But anyone who says you fool will be in danger of the fires of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and they remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift in front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to your brother or sister, then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still with them on the way. Or they may hand you over to the judge and the judge may hand you over to the officer and you may be thrown into prison. I tell you the truth, you will not get out until you've paid the last penny. 
For if you forgive people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive people their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. You have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a man or woman or any other person lustfully has already committed adultery with them in their heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give them a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces their spouse, husband or wife, except for marital unfaithfulness, causes them to commit adultery. And anyone who marries a person so divorced commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but keep all the oaths you've made to the Lord. But I tell you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it's God's throne, or by earth, for it's his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair black or white. Simply let your yes be a yes and your no be a no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. You've also heard that it was said, eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person in the following ways. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to them the other one also. And if someone wants to sue you and take your shirt, let them have your cloak as well. If someone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to everyone who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. If anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I tell you, hear me, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you, that you may be sons and daughters of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? Even sinners love those who only love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the pagans do that. But love your enemies. Do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be the sons and daughters of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be perfect, therefore, as your Father is perfect. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their fathers treated the false prophets. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before people to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in their religious buildings and on the streets to be honoured by people. 
I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you fast, do not look sombre as the religious hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show people they're fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, look well and hearty, exactly as you usually are, so that it will not be obvious to everyone that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen. And your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in their religious gatherings and on the street corners to be seen by people. I tell you the truth, they've received their reward in full. When you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not go on babbling like the pagans, for they think they'll be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, honoured be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. No one can serve two masters. Either they will hate the one and love the other, or they will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where the moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life or an inch to your height? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They don't labour or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon, in all of his splendour, was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured right into your lap. For in the same way that you judge others, you yourself will be judged. And with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. 
He also told them this parable. Can a blind person lead a blind person? Will they not both fall into a pit? A student is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother and sister's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother or sister, let me take the speck out of your eye, when you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye? You hypocrite! First, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother or sister's eye. Do not give to dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and then turn and tear you to pieces. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son or daughter asks for bread, will give them a stone? Or if they ask for a fish, will give them a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? In everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. But watch out for false prophets and false religion. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ferocious wolves. By their fruit you'll recognise them. Each tree is recognised by its own fruit. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognise them. The good person brings good things out of the good stored up in their heart. And the evil person brings evil things out of the evil stored up in their heart. For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the person who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. I will show you what that person is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. That one is like a wise person building a house who dug deep down and laid the foundation on a rock. When the flood came, the torrent struck that house and could not shake it because it was well built. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it didn't fall because it had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish person who built their house on the ground without a foundation. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell with a great crash. 
its destruction was complete. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. When he came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. <laughs>